Okay guys, this is going to be a gardening project day, and I've been wanting to do this for a little while. Uh, the avocados are getting a little better. Um, I wanted to do this in my backyard, it's a little bit more private, but my neighbor is, I don't know, they're doing some kind of weird thing. they got like a generator or a pressure washer running like all day, every day for like weeks, so I finally just gave up. <laughs> so we're probably going to do this from the front yard. Um, right now, ironically, they're not doing any noise, but it might just kick on. But this is the Fuerte, and it is looking much better. Uh, I want to go really easy on these things because they had a really bumpy first start on this first year. But you can see, you know, the little leaves, they're, uh, they're starting to get going here. So, you know, all is not lost on this guy. Uh, Fuerte means strong. This, this guy's been through some stuff. Oh, here we go. There's a good one. So anyways, it's alive, he's got a fighting chance, and he's trying to do his thing, so we're going to do a little bit of fertilizing, and, uh, you know, I'm still going to take it really easy, I'm just going to give him a little snack here, I don't want to burn these guys, but um, basically, uh, this is the fish fertilizer, just basically pure nitrogen, it's, uh, I don't think I'm going to use this this time around, I'm just going to use the fertilizer, a little bit of azomite, this, if you're wondering, Avocados, from what I can understand, love zinc, and uh, you don't want to go overboard on this. Like, maybe just throw in a touch, like a little teaspoon, in with your other stuff over there, and uh, it, uh, it, it. I don't know. Anyways, you could do your own research on that. Uh, and the garden foss in the summertime, I have to water so much because we have a very challenging spot over here. It's really hot summers. We don't have super cold winters because we're in California, but, uh, you know, we still get those random one or two or maybe three day dips where it can get down into the 20s and uh, it has gotten into the teens before. So, I mean, those are just brutal to avocados. And uh, this soil is basically, we're in Modesto and the area that I'm at, uh, the reason why I put these things in such big pots above ground as you go down about a foot and a half, we get like serious hard pan clay soil. And they actually, all this, where this house is built, this whole neighborhood used to be rice paddies for like 50 years. They used to just flood it out and grow rice in here. So the ground is really fertile, but it will hold water like nobody's business. It's a bowl. So I kind of try and balance out the watering where I water that and I don't run the sprinklers at the same day, so I don't want to saturate all the ground at the same time. Basically, I'll let everything else be dry, flood this out so that the water can work its way out of the planter box. And uh, so, I don't know, it's kind of a uh, play by ear kind of thing. So anyways, let's get going on this. Now, I like to think I've got a pretty good sense of humor, so this could very well turn into the not what to do on your garden uh, channel. <laughs> Instead of like the tutorial on how to grow your avocados, this could very ironically become the tutorial on how to uh, try to not kill your avocados. But yeah, let's experiment, have some fun. Uh, so anyways, basically I'm just grabbing one of these things, kind of scratching around a little bit here, knocking the soil loose, and it's awfully dry up here. But when you get down a little bit here, there is some moisture. So maybe I planted that guy a tad too high. Um, but we've got nice white roots down here. Uh, you kinda, I don't want to scratch around too much and disturb them. But basically just work everything back like this. And when I get that done, I'll pop back on here. And uh, we'll do a little bit of gardening uh, with the amendments anyway. Or learn from the mistakes I'm making. I don't know. It's a challenging area with the heat, the cold, the, the, the imperfect soil. But I like a challenge. I don't enjoy lost causes, but I do enjoy a good challenge. So I definitely have a good challenge on my hands. <laughs> definitely have a good challenge on my hands with this project. So uh, learn from it. Um, like I said in one of the earlier ones, I think one of the biggest mistakes is putting them in the ground in the spring here, like right now, horrible time, because we are gonna heat up so fast, boom. I mean, in a month, it's gonna be 100 degrees in here. So I would venture, put these guys in the ground in the fall if you're anywhere near where I'm at. Okay, but uh, work it all the way around like that and we'll be back in a second. Okay guys, uh, fast forward with the, with the time, wonderful uh, time jumping properties of uh, editing today. So basically what I've got here is this is the azomite. I've already worked this back all the way around, made a little ring. 
So basically you just kind of, you know, shake this stuff around. And uh, I don't think you can use too much of this because it's basically just ground up rocks. I just kind of want to avoid the dust from my video camera. And then this is a teaspoon of that zinc that I was talking about. And uh, I'm just going to dribble this around here loosely too. Just kind of sprinkle a little bit everywhere. I don't want to go bananas with that stuff because I don't know how powerful it is. So that's like mm, about an eighth of the recommended dosage. But it's just to give them, it's like a vitamin for these things from what I can understand. And uh, you guys can use whatever you want. This is what I just kind of happen to have is organic. And this is like one of those laundry cups, you know, for your soap. And I kind of like this because basically uh, a big one in the planter like this, I use two, you know, might get to the point of three if it had a lot of leaves and stuff on it. But uh, this one's kind of trying to nurse this one back from a little bit of shock. But if I have something in a little five gallon bucket, what's handy about the laundry scoop is I can just put one uh, scoop like this and I just measure that out for the trees that are potted. It just kind of makes life a little easier. And so I don't want to bore you guys to death doing this. Gardening is not exactly a fast paced, uh, you know, action packed YouTube station here, but it is kind of fun. I kind of find it a little bit relaxing to get away from the, you know, hustle and bustle kind of thing. And I'm just kind of trying to just sort of work this around just a little bit everywhere so it doesn't sit on one spot and kind of burn those roots. Just pull back in there a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do with this tree is just in case we might have a little, you know, uh, root rot preventative, I'm going to take the chance and play around with that garden foss. And uh, basically, I'm going to cut the uh, ratio of that down to probably, uh, I'd say about an eighth of what it recommends. And I'm just gonna use that as a starting point so I don't fry anything, damage anything. You know, caution is kind of key here. But at the same time, summer is closing in on me. So I have to get moving and get these guys some nutrition or they're gonna have some real problems. So. Basically, let me show you the manual for that. This stuff is what I'm going to use in the watering today. And what I thought was funny is this stuff actually has avocados listed on here. So I'm just going to, you know, I'll set this down on the ground so it's not shaking. I'm just going to set this here and let you guys pause it, read it, whatever. And uh, continues on to the next page a little bit. What I thought was kind of funny is berries are right here. You know, little odd fun fact, most people don't know this, but an avocado is actually a berry. It's like a big old prehistoric berry that dinosaurs used to eat, but it is a berry. So those are the directions for garden foss. And I'm gonna mix some of that up and I'll be back in a second. Well guys, by some miracle, the guy behind me quit running his well pump or whatever the hell he's doing. So I thought I'd sneak out here and give you an update on the avocados. Um, this is the lamb hoss. Maybe I can get you a shot through here. And, uh, you know, for being wrapped in plastic, it's doing okay. I haven't pulled down my lights yet. I was kind of leaving uh, those up just for a little bit longer in case we had a cold snap, but we're definitely through all that now. But, you know, I'll just leave it up and you guys can look at it as we're doing this. Um, the other thing, look out for the landmines here, is little seedling guys are doing okay. I think my surprise, this is what I'm talking about. This guy's probably in too heavy a soil, so I'm going to try that garden foss on surprise. I guess you get to be my guinea pig here. Sorry, buddy. I'm going to mix up a little heavier dose of this. The other thing about those instructions is they always show tree injection. They don't really show a, uh, a, a specified dosage for basically doing a soil drench so i'm gonna have to kind of you know guesstimate on that and read a little bit more carefully but uh the blueberries are coming in nicely I'm getting lots of little flowers 
and lots of leaves starting and buds growing everywhere. These avocados in the five gallon pots are doing wonderfully. Blooms and blossoms, everything is all, all starting up and you know, they're, they're doing great. So let me give you a quick little tour of everything else we got going on here. Looking out for landmines. Don't want to step on the landmine. All right, here is our hoss. And uh, it's this kind of stuff that sort of worries me. I don't know what that is, but that, that to me indicates we're getting like a fungus or a root rot. And you start getting these black edges on these leaves. Uh, ain't good. And this is where the surprise was. And it's always kind of darker back here. Now over here, we've got the reed and if my zoom works, there are little buds starting here. So this guy is good. I'm not going to inject the tree trunk in this one. I'm just going to do a little soil drench, but we're getting these black tips. And if I cut them off, and it just goes down a little further and turns black. So yeah, it's kind of been like this. He's been sort of chilling for the whole winter. I think I'm just going to leave him alone, fertilize him, and see what he does. Now this is my second stab at doing a holiday and you can tell he is getting going. He's got a bunch of little, I don't know, leaflets and, and blooms and stuff starting up. So he's doing good. But uh, you know, I think this is just good old salt burn on here. I don't think that's any kind of root rot disease or whatever going on. But this leaf is turning a little black. So if anybody has any advice, go ahead, chime in. If you've already been through this and I don't have to experiment, that would be wonderful. And lastly, this is the Cercado. I think I have like a like a caterpillar or tomato worm or something running around, you know, eating my leaves on this guy. But uh, this guy got just hammered by the sun last year. I had to cut off a whole bunch of branches. This thing was like twice the size, but the sun was just murdering it before I got this shade cloth in. So I got that in just in time. And it had a little bit of a rough start, but now he's starting to bounce back. It's rooted, so I expect good things from you this year, Kato. Okay, and that is a tour of the backyard avocado project, guys. And I guess I could back up and give you a rough idea of what my light system was here. You know, each one of these things has a little dangling light that I think those are 100 waters, but they're incandescent, they're not LEDs. And I just strung it along the backyard along my fence with zip ties and string and stuff. Nothing real special. Um, kind of just hang them wherever you can. That's for my blackberries, um, which those are just a headache. I uh, don't advise anybody getting those unless you have both space and trellising because they just, you have to come out here and wrap them every day. And then basically all this just runs into my little closet. I have just the red power cord here is bringing power in. And there's a timer in there and a, you know, like one of those little office splitters where you uh, put in like six or seven things and you can run them off of that. But I split up the load. You want to be careful. Don't overwhelm something. You know, kind of use two independent things instead of loading it all on one uh, with an industrial splitter in front of it. But basically, here's the golden rule, guys. When you backtrack all this power, make sure... Dog knocked that over. Make sure you come back to something that is like this. Where this, even though it doesn't show it, is GFIC protected. So it's made for outdoor rated stuff. I didn't just run an extension cord out of my house and cross my fingers. You know, if rain were to get into any of those little things, you know, I'd be covered. Um, but everything is sealed. And if there were connections where I plugged them in, it was inside the tarping. So, you know, the, the weather wasn't gonna get at those. And ironically, you don't want to wrap them up with saran wrap or anything because then you get condensation on them and uh, that will cause a short. So you always want it to be open air. If anything, cut a little hole in the Ziploc bag and sleeve it down over it to work like an umbrella, but leave the bottom open. So, I think we're going to have a surprise problem 
Hopefully you can pull out of this. I might repot you. I'm going to flood this thing pretty heavy on the dosages. I'm going to do twice this than I did to everything else. Kind of just sterilize the soil. And then I'm going to up-pot him. Oh, I did do this. One little tip. is I poked little holes. I'm trying to aerate the soil. If you guys are looking for something really good, you get one of these dollar store brooms. You know, I'm working one-handed, but you pop the handle off here. And it's basically a hollow little metal tube. Hacksaw that out. I just poked little holes in here, tapped out the dirt. So there's like four little holes, you know, about here, here. I didn't want to get into the roots of the plant, but uh, you go outside a little bit, stab these in, and uh, you get a little air to go down in there, you know. So I have my own unique way of gardening, that is for sure. <laughs> but uh, you want to come along for the ride, you're more than welcome. I'm going out to the front and uh, show you how the other two guys are doing while wow, we have a quiet neighborhood. And I think we're going to lose another soldier in the great avocado fight of Modesto, California. Mr. Jim Bacon, I think you're in trouble, buddy. I don't think you're going to make it. So I think we're going to have a little avocado funeral for him. But before I give up, I'm going to, I figure I have nothing to lose on this guy. He is green and this was black and then I cut it off and then it just comes and it dies down even more. So I think what I'm going to do next time around is I'm going to get my kid who likes doing this kind of stuff and he can I'm gonna drill a little hole in here and he can put the injector inside of there and uh, I'll let him shoot some of that garden foss in here and, you know by some slim chance maybe it'll make it bounce back who knows you know okay and if you guys were back on our original one there was a Mexicola Grande that was here first and uh, the wind was just vicious on that guy and just, it, it was, I don't know, it just didn't end well. Um, I don't know if I ever got that on video, but this time around, I put this over here, which, you know, it kept blowing over in the wind, but it's, uh, I forget what you even call those things, but it's basically acting as a windbreak for this guy. So I've got it supported with strings, tied it up three different ways so it doesn't blow over. So it keeps the wind from ripping these leaves off of here. And this is my regular Mexicola, not a grande. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna work this around here. And I know you guys see a lot of the dead roots and stuff, but that's mostly from the Mexicola grande. When I when I worked it back around, I just threw the soil back on top. Those aren't the roots for this Mexicola. They're already dead. It's uh, it it it's getting watered. When you go down here, I mean, the soil is nice and moist. It's awfully dry looking up here. Maybe, I, like I said, I think I might have planted these a little bit too high. I was planning on them kind of settling down. If, if they do okay, like right here, you got some white. But if they do okay, I think I'm going to go mound up some extra soil on these guys and kind of shape this a little bit more, you know, gradual dome-like instead of kind of a sharp little pinnacle like this. Um, so I'll probably do that before the summertime rolls around. I just want to give these guys all a good feeding, so... I'm not going to sit here and bore you with the details of doing every single plant here. I'm just going to copy what I did to the Fuerte. And I think I was in the middle of saying this when a big car or something drove by, but I'm going to get... <laughs> this is why I hate doing it in the front yard. I got noises everywhere. My God. It's like, yeah, okay, he's trying to film. It'd be nice if it was quiet. Let's go get the whole neighborhood out here. Walking dogs, barking, driving cars, running pressure washers. I mean, my God. Yoy, what a bad time to be trying to do gardening, right, guys? So anyways, I think I'm going to get Austin to uh, let him stab the needle in there. How often do you get to stick a needle inside of a tree trunk, right? So that's kind of one of his things. <sighs> Boy, note to self, man. <laughs> Don't ever try and do a gardening video on a Sunday afternoon. Jeez. All right. And uh, here's good old Fuerte. They're doing okay. But see how bright the sun is? I mean, we're just in spring, guys. I mean, it's like, man, I don't know if you can even feel it, but it, it's bright. So, anyways, catch you later. Bye. Okay. I have to remind you guys, I built my super handy dandy avocado watering thing. And if you haven't built one of these, man, do you need to do it. This thing is awesome. It just lays down the water like nobody's business. See how it looks like a geyser? 
This is like the definition of high volume, low pressure right here. I've got my hose just running wide open. So this is using every bit of like a quarter inch, three quarter inch hose, I guess. Anyways, if you don't have one of these things, build it. That's all I gotta say. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Without this thing, man, my watering in the backyard would take like 10 times as long. Because everything is built like all low flow and you know, you just, you can't get anything to lay down any water unless it's like totally high pressure, you know? Now, one other thing you guys might want to do is uh, take like an irrigation tube like that, knock it in under the root ball and drill some half inch holes in it so you can get some air down there. Or you could do something like this and you flood irrigate directly down into that root ball. So I can set a hose on low and just do a trickle watering, which I might just do for this because I think it is really needing a nice, slow, heavy watering. So I think I'm going to do that today on this guy. All right, later folks. Well, I just thought you guys might find this interesting that this is what the Jim Bacon looks like. The roots actually look pretty good. Uh, nice and white. Just kind of getting rid of fertilizing here anyways. So surprisingly, they don't really look too bad. I don't know. Maybe there's enough kind of energy in there to throw out some sprouts. Might pop out. I have no idea. Okay, guys. This is for the garden foss. And basically, we're going to do kind of like a three-fold attack. This is the surprise that is not... I should probably just grab it. Not looking very good. So what I decided to do is with the garden foss we're going to do three things. We're going to do a foliar spray, I'm going to drill a hole, actually drill a hole into the trunk and you inject this stuff into the trunk and then I'm going to do a soil drench. Uh, basically it's going to be this one, I'm going to do it to the Jim Bacon in the front yard and I was going to do it with the reed, but I think it might just pull through. I'm going to kind of wait and see how that one does. I'm going to experiment on these two because I think this one's basically a goner at the rate it's going. And the Jim Bacon is nothing but a twig. So. When I read the directions, uh, they say to use it for a foliar spray and to do it as a tree injection. Uh, they recommended it based full strength. <laughs> Uh, based on the per yard of canopy so we don't have a whole lot of yards of canopy so what I did is I went with the weaker measurement and I still cut it down in half so for the tree injection we're basically going to do one teaspoon for half ounce of water so I had to do a lot of math to convert and it kind of has a pinkish look to it so that's what we're going to shoot in I don't know if the pinkishness is going to show up. <sighs> so here's what we're doing. The tape is just to mark a quarter of an inch so we don't go too far and drill slow so we don't burn up the wood, right? I don't know. I never really thought I'd be drilling holes in the tree. And it says to do it in a slight downward angle, so that's what we're doing. So 
So I'm just going to do this until it runs off. I really don't know how much we're supposed to do. But that looks like a lot for a little tree. Actually, it wasn't really that hard. I just found it easier to move the needle in and out a little bit. Okay, so just to clarify, that was one teaspoon per half ounce water. Now this is the spray, and the spray is half a teaspoon to a quarter of a gallon. So that was after I kind of had to do some refinements. So, but this is basically a thousand cc, so I'm rounding within about five percent probably. And since I don't know what the hell is on this stuff, that's why I have the rubber gloves here. Okay. Uh, apologize for the Star Wars shirt. I'm out of uniform here. Just a casual weekend. Now yeah, I'm only going to show this. I'm not going to show this on the gym bacon. Now the last thing is the soil drench. And basically what that did was two teaspoons per gallon. I've got an old fashioned two gallon like flower pot kind of a pour thing so for me I doubled that up so t two teaspoons per gallon for a soil drench um, I didn't really recommend this for avocados but I found some reference to bedding plants and ornamentals and I just averaged it out to that
Okay, well, that is the grand experiment. See if we can save an avocado from root rot. So stay tuned, folks. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the bacon out in the front, but I don't wanna look like a complete screwball with a tripod and a camera out there, so uh, that one I'm just gonna do solo, but it'll be the same exact thing. All right, later, guys. Okay, well, I just made the biggest YouTube mistake of all time. I forgot to almost plug the product, right? I mean, they pay us, you know, 150 subscriber channels, big money for this stuff. So this is what we're playing around with here, guys. This is the stuff we're diluting, and that's the plant. We're going to see if we can basically save an avocado that is basically going to die otherwise. Just one final thought for you guys. Uh, if you have pets... This stuff pours all over the place, and when you wash it, it's, it's pretty damn concentrated. So spray it all down, you know, and let it soak into the ground. Take your pet inside. We don't want to have a dead dog that, you know, wants to come over here and drink this stuff, so kind of bear that in mind. And uh, I did this kind of in the, I guess, dusk. Not exactly twilight here, but uh, it's about 6 o'clock. And I wanted to get it so it didn't cook during the day. I wanted to put everything in so it would stay nice and soak all night long. So, it's heading towards the evening. It's a really nice night, actually. So anyways, uh, place your bets. You think Surprise is going to die? Make it or not make it? Okay, so this is the next day, uh, kind of late afternoon. So it's almost about 24 hours since I put that garden foss on. And uh, it doesn't seem like it did any damage to the leaves or any of the canopy or anything like that. So this should be, you know, safe to use on, on pretty much any plant. I wouldn't think that, at least with the ratios that we used, it would do any damage. And if anything, the leaves seem uh, a little bit perkier. So if we have a fungus or something going on here, or maybe a little bit of a root rot. So now we've kind of done everything we can to it, and we'll see if it makes any difference to park it up. Okay, I'll fill you guys in as this happens. Oh, and the one out in the front yard, I did do exactly the same thing to this. It didn't have any leaves, so there's no point in videotaping. It was basically just a stick. But the roots are there, so it is alive, so we'll see what happens with it, too.